back in the fold. So 28mm um, primary. Hi, James from Elite. I'm back by popular demand. So we've been asked to come in and service this daking heat pump. Monoblock outside, 11 kilowatt, uh, cylinder inside, standalone cylinder. Um, I just want to take you through a couple of things that I've noticed on this installation. I don't know what that is. I think that's stress. That's renewables for you. So it's only been installed one year and obviously the first thing we would do i'll try and get us in there is look at the efficiency of the system so that we know what we are we're dealing with nice efficient system don't mess about with it too much it's fine um but this has been running for a year it's 3343 kilowatt hours kilowatt hours because i got it wrong in the last video and the produced heat um, is uh, produced heat is nine thousand three hundred kilowatt hours. So it's like two eighty, two ninety. So scop seasonal coefficient of performance. So that is actually under or just above the MCS regulation. So that's not great. Um, so what I have seen on this, this is actually now I don't blame the installers. They are by the industry, and sometimes it's not great. So I do appreciate where sometimes they're coming from. So, um, wanna uh, lift all standards? Uh, a good place to go is the Heat Geek course. By the way, uh, we are Heat Geek Elite, um, so we can check us out there, and also make sure you go on the course. It's great. Um, so, we've got a Y plan, uh, three pot diverter valve. Uh, that goes to a on the on the underfloor side of things. Just tighten that air vent, it was leaking. Uh, the underside goes to this buffer. Before then, it tees into the radiators. So after the three port, it goes to the radiators. For the underfloor, it goes to a, uh, a low loss header, not a buffer, a low loss header. And then from there, it goes to that underfloor down there with a pump and a mixing valve on it. So it's just, as you know, Heat Geek would say, uh, that just lends itself to inefficiencies. More components that the industry want you to buy is just going to hamper efficiencies ideally what we would be doing is uh, making this into a nice one loop, uh, open loop system and um, taking out the pump taking out the mixing valve and putting a volumizer which is there a better one than that on the return so it helps aids with the defrost cycles uh, if it hasn't got enough volume especially in the system on the control side of things what i have noticed is i've set this up differently now that was set up to dual, cons uh, dual zone for a bit of the underfloor, which is just through to the kitchen there and through to the extension. That's got a thermostat on it. And then um, it's got the Mdoka doing the radiator side of things. It was actually set up on the same weather curve. So I don't really see the need in the dual zone. So what I've done is I've put it on a single zone. Um, when the underfloor thermostat comes on now, it just does the underfloor pump, uh, which is good. It doesn't turn the machine back on. So that can run for all, for all day and the night. You know, it won't take that much energy, so that can run. Um, and obviously when the actuator's open and it's cold for heat, it can go down there. But we're gonna just leave that as like a, an overheat thermostat, especially in the conservatory. So if the customer likes 20 degrees, we'll put that 21 degrees, keep that zone as open as long as, as much as possible. So, that so remember to look into the camera so instead of myself um so we're going to be one zone system madoka put it on under floor because then it puts it straight forward to a dt of five which the heat pump likes and that's got a dt of five on the refrigerant side and then we are going to refine the curve show the customer how to refine the curve as well so they're getting nice and toasty enough we cannot start offsetting that curve and this is just going to go on the Bedo canal and it's also we've enabled modulation. So what I'm saying is as it's raised into the set point temperature, it's actually going to modulate that flow temperature by keeping that heat pump on as long as possible. And that is the aim of the game is to keep that thing on as long as possible um, and not turn it on off. The start becomes the most expensive uh, part of it. So just keep it going. So, yeah, we are uh, heating um, tank. We're just going to put out reheat only. If you've got smart tariffs and stuff like that, I think it's beneficial to put scheduling on it. But if you're on a fixed 
fixed cost, just enjoy it. Uh, it's a kind of an inefficient process anyways because of hot water temperatures. Um, so yeah, obviously, the, as you can see, um, so that needs to be uh, upgraded to 19 mil thick um, um, legging. I will make sure that's shut. <sighs> um, one zone system, reheat only. Oh, really disappointing thing from the installers. I don't know if they'll know this on the con controller, but the, the back of the house, where the radiators start to go a bit more, the back of the house, that was starting to get a bit colder. The main reason for that is the Madoka thermostat, you can see I've got my testers perfectly positioned. These really do come out of calibration quite a bit. So we just make sure that that is in calibration. You can offset that back on the controller. That was a degree and a half out further up. So then it will just get, think it's getting hotter quicker. So therefore affect the rest of the building. And that's probably the main culprit of the colder part of the house. So we're going to keep this thing running nice, tickling low, slow and continuous, ticking over nicely. Um, I would uh, obviously be putting a bit of a price on to... Um, get rid of this pump zone valves mixing valves and just getting it from A to B as quick as possible upgrading the lag in and yeah uh, so that's the inside and I will take you outside now and see what we found outside along with obviously the service servicing wise in here clean the filter there is a filter down there a magnetic filter uh, top up the vessel um, uh, which is the portable vessel make sure that's nice and topped up because people sometimes don't on the services which we should do and obviously can, we've set up the controls to make it as efficient as possible. Uh, comfort levels uh, increasing for the customer, enjoying the heating and at a lower price. So yeah, we'll go outside and, uh, and see what we find. Okay, so I'm back, I'm outside now. So basically, uh, obviously we're coming to service the heat pump. We are looking at cleaning the heat exchanger, um, taking the grill off the front, cleaning the fan, cleaning the heat exchanger, the evaporator basically. Um, from the outside to in and inside top, so give it a really good clean down. And then inside the daking unit, we have got a vessel and pump inside it and a PRV. So we'll get our um, pressure tester uh, onto the vessel, have an open end and give it a good clean. The things I've noticed, again, on this system is, first of all, the drip tray is already completely full. Um, they're not great anyways. Um, Dakin, I think, on the new unit, are looking at bunging up uh, the uh, the bottom of the unit like other units and then you know draining away like other units, which are better. Um, but they've kind of had to makeshift this drip tray on the bottom of these ones. Uh, we try and just do like a base or something like that, really. So when, when we do have to go to this extent, because it's a nice paver, you know, you know paving, is you can put these really on a steep angle or dramatically down getting it to that conden uh, condensate and i don't know if you can see that but th there's like some sort of a an up and back over so it's never going to drain anyways so that is the condensate i'm no electrician that don't look that don't look right to me so that needs changing and <whistles> hello mr plastic pipe no so 28 mil um, primaries would have been absolutely fine with that. They've done the trunk in. They've just done plastic pipe. Um, so we would change that. I've just looked in the basket filter and I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. It is full. So that's not uh, fantastic. So I'll give that a good clean out. You can expect a little bit. The, the problem is that you can appreciate of the whole heating system a spoonful can can clog that up so i do believe that daking and other manufacturers should have some parameters so it can just kind of pre-warn uh, when things are getting blocked up like that uh, so yeah give it a good clean um check for any refrigerant leaks or anything like that inside special on these ones as well that they've, made, they've taken the transport belt off um, but yeah for us i'd say we would change that for a copper pipe uh, nice clipped, obviously primary pro lagging, um, better protective lagging. Uh, glad to see that they have put antifreeze valves on because what I do, it's never going to be in use, but you never know. Um, so that is the outside, so it's yeah, not great. Um, 
and I think that's about it. So there's a lot to improve on it, but yeah, we can improve it. But so yeah, uh, this was nearly installed, obviously, like we said earlier, uh, last year, and it's not great. So we'll be um, putting a little quote together and hopefully I get this result. So, so yeah, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I don't know if we'll add that there, but uh, like and subscribe, and that would be uh, really handy for the channel. So thank you. See you soon.